Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tukele. In studio with me, Sean Ashton and Liam Hechter, both from Anchor Capital. Now today we're talking Investec, an international specialist banking and asset management group providing a range of financial products and services to a client base in three principal markets, the United Kingdom, South Africa and Australia. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. I take it Investec is one of those phenomenal brands where we think of the zebra, right? Uh, the corporate imaging of that company. But just to give us a uh, identification of Investec PLC, Investec Limited, as well as the broadband of the uh, geographic locations in which it operates. Sure, Gugu. So I think you're going to see the group as, as, as one whole in terms of PLC and Limited. It's just two separate li listing structures where you can buy the shares both on the LSC and, and South Africa, the JSC and South Africa. And really what's quite unique, unique about Investec in the context of uh, the rest of the big four banks in South Africa is A, the earnings split in that much of what they do is not related to lending. Um, so they've got a big wealth management and asset management business that's quite a nice capital light business. Um, and then the geographical split, so they'll make a significant amount of their, of their profits in the UK, about 40% or so. Mm -hmm. If we do take a look at that geographic split, again, we know the pressures that the South African market and environment is under. Compared to the UK, are we seeing a slight pick up there? And uh, what's unfolding in, in uh, Australia, Liam? So Investec left uh, Australia towards the, the beginning of this year. I think they started the process at, at the end of last year. Largely, they still do have an operation in Australia, but I think they've, for the most uh, part, exited uh, that position. Um, in terms of which ec economic region you would want to have more exposure to right now for a bank, I would probably think that the UK market is more conducive to, to rising asset prices. Um, interest rates are at historically low levels there and should uh, tick up sometime within the next possibly 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the, the macro dynamics, we, we certainly like the, the UK exposure that Investec gives you from a banking perspective. Mm. We currently have a slide on the thesis of the overall company and uh, a view there, but if we take a look at the re-rating uh, with regard, what does that actually uh, tell us about? Uh, and going forward with the recent credit ratings at uh, downgrade in South Africa, would that also have a bearing on uh, Investec and its uh, rating in so South Africa? So it absolutely does, and, and you, you saw a dramatic move in, in bond yields in, in late 2015 as a result of uh, the removal of our finance or of the previous finance minister. Um, and I think that's, that's created an issue for, for, for all of the banks. Um, so you saw the big four banks derate quite significantly because two things happen. A, your funding costs move out. If they have to tap the wholesale market for, uh, for funding, that's, you've effectively got an, another 150 basis points worth of funding costs that you've added on. And secondly, um, the valuations of banks are very sensitive to uh, to, to a change in, in long-term interest rates from the perspective of the, the rate at which you discount your earnings. So a higher, cost, a higher bond yield means a higher cost of equity, which means a lower P multiple ultimately. So you saw all the big four banks sell off quite ag aggressively. Um, Investec somewhat less so, but that makes sense because probably half of the value of Investec is unrelated to what's happening in South Africa. Um, so we, we would argue that you're probably better positioned in something like Investec than you would be in, 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 in the big four banks. Mm -hmm. Having said that though, well, the uh, performance of Investec versus some of these South African banks are from a, a return on equity perspective mm -hmm. and share price value, how does it fare? So I think you've got to, you've got to break it up into separate parts, right? So, and, and, and treat, treat certain assets in a, in a different manner. So for example, um, when we look at the wealth and investment business, the, the actual return on equity is much higher than what they show because they've spent a lot of money on goodwill acquiring and building up, building up that business through, uh, through acquisitions. Um, but if you, if you look at the, the wealth businesses and, and the asset management businesses, their return on equity will be very high, probably north of 100% in terms mm. of tangible returns in essence because you're not employing balance sheet capital to grow your earnings. You're using other people's money in the form of assets that are managed and you're charging a fee to manage those assets and it's very capital light. So, so those are great businesses from a balance sheet efficiency point of view. And then when you look at the, the specialist bank, they've come off a very low base specifically in the UK, where I think the, the overall RAE is probably a, has been about 6% at the lows and it's been improving as, they, as they've been restructuring and, and, and rolling off. Well, effectively they've carved out the, the UK into a legacy bank and into the kind of ongoing bank as they call it. Um, and, and in the ongoing bank, the, the return on equity is actually coming through quite nicely now, following certain restructuring actions that they've taken and, and a runoff of, of bad debts. So that's probably up to about 13%, which is 
uh, probably it's certainly lower the lower than the the best banks in South Africa, like a First Rand, where they're running at twenty five percent. But you would also argue that your cost of money in the UK is significantly lower than what it is in South Africa. So a thirteen percent return on equity in the U in the UK would justify a very high multiple of, of book value um, because your cost of money is low. Coming back to the UK very briefly, uh, it is post the uh, 2008 financial crisis and I understand a lot of debt was gathered in that market. Have they managed to bid that down uh, now as we uh, approach a, a new cycle in the market? So Investec is look, it looks very different today than the way it did uh, probably in 2007, 2008 where they, they did a few acquisitions that were possibly ill-timed. Um, I don't think they fores foresaw what was coming and neither did the rest of the market. So they weren't, the management can't really be blamed too much in terms of that. They have done a very good job of running those legacy assets off. And so what you're going to see is this in the UK especially is a gradual uptick in the ROE there as that impairment runs down. So what you'll see is a nice kicker to earnings. That's not going to last forever. So that tailwind will probably be, be all but done in the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. But ultimately what you're going to see at a group level is that the ROE will start ticking up. And, and for us as analysts, that's, that's certainly um, an indicator that the, the, the bank definitely deserves to be re-rated. And we think at the moment the market hasn't priced that in fully. Coming back to its different divisions, though, you mentioned wealth and investment. We've got asset management together with uh, the uh, specialist bank. Uh, coming to specialist bank, how difficult is it for them to maybe build up on their market share, given the fact that both economies which they operate in are fairly mm. well-banked environments? And when it comes to asset management, will they take a, a bit of a dip? Because by the time this does go on air, we'll have some clarity with regard to the U.S. Federal Reserve and their interest rate hiking cycle. But hopefully all market volatility has been priced into the market for now. So I think from a specialist banking perspective, I think they've got, they've got a reasonably, well, they do have a high market share in South Africa, certainly, in the, in the, in the chosen niche that they operate in. But in the UK, they're still very small relative to, to the broader opportunity set. And I think a lot of their banking competitors have been weakened through, through the financial crisis. And they came through, I wouldn't say unscathed, but they didn't have to do an aggressive capital raise to, to get through it. So I, th I think that ultimately the specialist banking business in the UK can grow off what is still quite a small base. Mm. I think South Africa, they will, they will be subject more to the cycle um, of, of where lending goes. But I think also in that space, they're probably a lot better positioned than the average uh, bank out there, if you want to talk about the big four, in the sense that the customer base that they're dealing with uh, tends to be high income earners and high net worth individuals, people who will, will, who will find that they're under less pressure economically than what the broader population will be mm -hmm. in South Africa in the kind of environment that we're in now. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the metrics very briefly, from a PE standing as well as the share price movements, uh, does it value favorably compared to its peers? So at, at the moment, uh, well, we look at Investec, you know, maybe a consolidated view that the, the, re the viewers will be looking at tonight. They'll be looking at a group PE multiple, but ultimately when we build the models, we, we value each business separately and then we bring them together. Um, in terms of the parts of this business, each one of the parts we feel are, are reasonably valued. We feel the bank is undervalued. We think the asset management business on, on our metrics look fair. And um, in the wealth management business, we think we're being very conservative on the valuation there. So yeah. in terms of bringing that together, um, for the, the quality of earnings that you're getting out of this business, as well as the, the czar hedge, the, the rand hedge qualities as well, we, uh, we think it's, fa it's fair, it's reasonable, yeah. We, we hold it. And to talk through some valuation numbers, I mean, just to put figures to it, so at current share prices, you know, we're using about 14 and a half times earnings for, for the wealth business, which is a very sticky earnings base. That's, we think that's conservative. 2% of assets on the asset management business. Many people look at asset managers as a percentage of, of, of assets, so we think that's fair. And if you, take, if you strip that out of the current market cap, you're left with a specialist bank at about a 20% discount to book. Sure. Now, given where the ROE is moving to, we would justify that that needs to be arguably quite significantly above book. Um, so, so we think uh, Investec is, is probably worth 120 to 130 rand a share. Sure. Well, we've uh, clearly uh, got some analysis on it, but time now to find out from our experts whether to buy, hold or sell Investec. Liam, let's start with you. Your view, buy, hold or sell Investec? Investec is, is one of our high conviction buyers in the sector. We've liked it for two years now. We do think that there's going to be an increased competition in the space with Discovery, um, their banking offering. We think that that will probably um, target certain clients of Investec, so we'll always be co cognizant of that and, and just keep on top of things. 
Um, but at, at the moment in our market, this is definitely in terms of the banking exposure that we would want. This is this is the one. Sean. Yeah, I, would, I think that sums it up pretty well. I mean, we, we think it's undervalued at current prices. There's some headwinds in certain pockets of their business. And I'd specifically say the South African environment is not improving. It's getting worse. Um, we, 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 think, we think the thesis ultimately hinges on a re-rating of, of the specialist bank to more than book value, which given what's happening in their, in their UK business, we think is something that should be justified. Um, and uh, yeah, I would call it a buy, certainly. Mm, I take it then easier for South African investors to get exposure through the JC listing versus the LSE. Absolutely, and it would certainly be our preferred entry over, over the big four banks. Mm. Well, we'll leave it there for today. Uh, thank you so much for your analysis. Oh, and just on the management, Stephen Kossif, well-respected business leader uh, who's obviously at the helm of the company, and I take it quite a lot of confidence in his leadership skills and strategy going forward. Yeah, I think he's certainly uh, an old hand at it. He's been running the bank for, for many years. I think he knows the business as well as anybody could know the business. So I think the, the one risk, obviously, is transition to, uh, to a new management team in time to come. Um, but we have to buy into the fact that they'll manage that, that transition. Exactly. We'll leave it there for today. Thanks again to uh, both my guests for joining us today, Sean Ashton and Liam Hechter, both from uh, Anchor, Anchor Capital. Do catch us again next time where we talk more stocks.